How is man created? There are many contradictory accounts of how this occurred. It tells us the beauty of such multifaceted philosophy is no matter what scientists discover Muslims will have a verse to refer to which verifies the miraculous knowledge of the Quran. 2. Earth and the Galaxy Rain is sent from the heavens as opposed to being part of a natural process called the water cycle? Reading these verses together provides an image of a very primitive understanding of the cosmos. A heaven that is raised with pillars that we cannot see. A sky put as a roof above our heads. Mountains placed as pegs to hold the earth down, thereby preventing earthquakes. A sun that sets in a muddy spring with people living nearby. All nonsensical concepts having no alignment with modern science. There is no description of a great explosion and the formation of solar systems with orbiting planets around centric stars. No black holes, no corona, no ionosphere or quasars, but a heaven on invisible pillars. According to the Quran, Allah may not have even known about more hours of daylight at the northern southern hemispheres, because at the equator and Arabia the length of the day doesn't change. What were Eskimos at the pole supposed to do during the month of Ramadan, where the sun rises and then sets after six months? Starve to death? Or did the writer simply not know? 3. Human Reproduction This quote from Sayyidith requires no further elaboration. As mentioned earlier, starting with Muhammad's account of embryology, we can easily determine its scientific inaccuracy in addition to its obvious plagiarization from earlier works by Greek philosophers and scientists such as Galen, Hippocrates and Aristotle, or Indian theses on the subject by Charak and Susruta. The account that follows shows the same four stages of the embryo as described by the Greek physician Galen, writing around 150 CE. It should also be noted that one of Muhammad's companions, Harith ben Kalada, studied at the school of Jandi Sharpur in Persia and would have been well acquainted with the teachings of Aristotle, Hippocrates and Galen. Nutfa here, semen is mentioned in verse 86.6 and is the fluid issued from between the loins and ribs, not, as we know today, from the testes. This reflects the mistaken view of Hippocrates still prevalent at the time of Muhammad. Nowhere in this description, nor the Quran, is the female's egg mentioned. As for the quotes show, it says a baby is born by a sperm turning into a blood clot and then into a lump. Out of the lump bones are found and then on the bones flesh is placed. In fact, organs and flesh are the first that begin cellular division and formation. Later, as the child grows, bone structures begin to develop along with organs and flesh. Another particularly lauded example is where it states in the Quran that the embryo behaves like a leech and looks like a piece of chewing gum. Having read these quotes without bias, then leech-like behavior would have been inherently obvious during birth as the umbilical cord bleeds when it is removed. Regarding chewed gum, I wonder if any small organism not yet fully formed could be described in this way. None of these facts would be considered as miraculous events if they were read with the same integrity as you would expect from a serious piece of research. Four spirits can there really be a spirit inside us that will rise when we are dead? Certainly, scientifically, there appears to be no proof that they exist. In fact, if ghosts, invisible beings and magic were real and acceptable notions, then why in the real world are they derided and seen as a sign of lunacy when taken out of the context of religion? 
Muslims are supposed to believe in invisible spirits called jinns, which influence their daily lives. There is even a non-Muslim jinn that causes trouble to followers of Islam. The Kafir jinni influences the abnormal behavior of the patients with psychiatric disorders. The Arabic word for a madman is majnoon, which means ridden by a jinn. With this knowledge, the treatment now becomes straightforward to beat the jinni by beating the patient, and the jinn will leave. Psychiatric disorders are still treated this way in many Islamic countries. It sounds particularly harsh when it is Allah who in the first place created them. And as it may now be down to the simple fact that they had not even eaten enough dates in the morning. 5. Food and Prevention of Disease Pork and alcohol consumption are forbidden in Islam but what really is so wrong with eating pork and alcohol? The West eats pork and suffers no more long-term damage from it than it does with beef or other meats. In fact, the BMA, British Medical Association, are yet to issue guidelines against the eating of pork, as they did with beef after BSC. Provided alcohol is consumed sensibly, then it can be enjoyed as it is by the majority of the world's population and certainly no more dangerous than uncontrolled usage of any other dangerous substances by a minority, for example drugs or guns, etc. In fact, scientific research has demonstrated an association between moderate alcohol consumption and a lower risk of some cancers and cardiovascular disease. Prophet Muhammad also believed that certain types of food provide protection against all types of diseases. This applied even to his favorite foods, in particular honey, dates, and black seed. Here, the Prophet Muhammad advocated using camel's urine as medicine. The Quran has mentioned vegetables and fruits as well, but strangely enough, the fruits mentioned for medicine and food were the only ones available in Arabia at the time. No exotic passion fruits, kiwi or pineapples available in heaven. Only 14th century Arab fruits. This erroneous discovery of the healing property of flies' wings is described in the Sayyidith. But sadly it fails to specify which one of the flies' wings to eat for the miracle cure from the disease. I am sure many scholars could find ways to justify these clauses, as I am sure I could if I felt obligated to try. But would it be justification for justification's sake? However, it remains to be said that if the book was not a conspiracy or vision created by the need of rulers or individuals to find order and peace in an otherwise unruly and uncivilized society of the time, but actually written with divine knowledge and really was a book of God, then such oddities and inconsistencies surely would just not arise.